This is Hugh Osborne. I've been presenting Microsoft in the Classroom seminars for two years, and I've often heard educators ask an essential question. Can we see a vivid hands-on demonstration of 21st century learning? We'd like to see what Office 365, OneNote, Microsoft Educator Network Resources, and other tools can do when integrated into an advanced learning design. So I've created Earthquake, a science, technology, engineering, arts, and math demo that uses all these tools to show what's possible. It works on the eight devices used in Microsoft in the Classroom seminars set up to represent a teacher and seven students. Each participant in the seminar sits at one of these devices and interacts with the demo as a student. The project starts when one Wilson Unified School District planetary science teacher, who happens to share my name and likeness, decides to create a two-week project on earthquakes and tectonic plates. This course is essentially earth science, but Wilson, following scientific trends since the exoplanet revolution, studies earth in the context of its role as a planet. Mr. O goes to the Microsoft Educator Network and finds a PDF on 21st century learning design exactly what he's looking for. Microsoft has partnered with top research firm SRI to develop six dimensions of student 21st century learning that bridge the classroom and the workplace. Mr. O finds out that for each of these dimensions there is a rubric and evaluation tree with positive and negative examples for every design step. Mr. O also discovers that there's a whole set of free tools and finds the worldwide telescope which seems very intriguing. So he installs it and checks it out. Mr. O is extremely excited to see that he can model and explore the solar system and galaxy, zooming through space and into planets and other celestial objects. He also finds that there are tours created by top scientists, like this one on Galileo's impact on civilization. In January of 1610, Galileo Galilei used his telescope to observe the planet Jupiter. What he found would ultimately change our understanding of the universe forever, and this tour is meant to explain why. It's important to realize that these tours are not videos. You can stop them and explore the celestial objects around you, as you can see here. Also, the Worldwide Telescope can drive a school planetarium for full class viewing of experts or students' tours. To start building the project, Mr. O signs into Office 365 in the cloud. Office 365 is the global standard productivity infrastructure, and of course Mr. O wants his students to learn essential workplace tools. Under People, you can see the students in Mr. O's Planetary Sciences 9B class, the students represented by the seven devices, and a group containing these students. Mr. O creates a calendar for the earthquake project in March when it is to be implemented. He shares this with the class. For class communications, Mr. O sets up a OneNote class notebook. He goes to OneDrive, which is a powerful file repository, and touches the gear icon. These are the SharePoint apps set up by the Wilson administrator. Mr. O selects OneNote class notebook creator to create the notebook, which only takes a couple of minutes. He enters the notebook name and learns about the three parts of a class notebook, which we'll see in action in a second. When he completes the steps, he gets a link he can put into an email to his whole class. Mr. O sends out an introductory email to a student group with a link to download the notebook. Here we are on Billy's device. Billy clicks Mr. O's link and automatically installs a Planetary Science 9B notebook. He sees that there are three sections. First, the assignments section is read-only for students, so that the teacher can publish assignments and core content. Second, the collaboration space is read-write for everyone in the class. Billy adds a wiki entry on tectonic plates. Finally, there is a section with Billy's name on it that is read-write for both Billy and the teacher. There's nothing in here right now, but Billy can only see this one and the teacher can see all the students' sections. On Mr. O's device, you can see all three kinds of sections, but note that all the students are on his device, not just Billy, as we saw on Billy's device. Mr. O can comment on Billy's entry into the wiki.
Commas entered in any notebook are almost immediately propagated through all notebooks, with the author's initials available in history. Here we are in Kevin's notebook, and you can see if we go to the collaboration space and the wiki that Mr. O's comments are here, and Kevin has added his own. If we go to Billy Wu's notebook at this point, we'll see the initials and the comments from both Mr. O and from Kevin. So OneNote provides nearly instantaneous communications, structured communications, for a classroom or for an entire district. So OneNote class notebook communications is the first main concept that Mr. O builds on. The second main concept is a meta project, a kind of 21st century learning design in which a small team of students act like assistant teachers and create the curriculum with Mr. O. So here are the four project steps. First, Mr. O writes up the meta project, asks for proposals from the students who want to be on the design team, then selects the design team. That happens during this first week on the calendar that Mr. O is shared with the class. Second, the design team spends two weeks researching the subject, creating and documenting technology pathways, and defining the learning activities for the whole class. That happens during these two weeks. Third, the rest of the class spends two weeks in pairs implementing the activities with the design team acting as mentors. This happens during these two weeks. Finally, the meta team and Mr. O evaluate the projects. Let's see what this looks like when it's all put together. It's two weeks later and the meta team, called the Earthworms, is done. They've given their work to Mr. O and he put it into the assignment section of his notebook so it automatically appears in all student notebooks. On Billy's device, you can see the technology pathways and activity design in these green tabs in the assignment section. The technology pathways are a sophisticated non-cognitive task for the earthworms because they have to map out complex technology and then reveal enough information that their classmates don't get frustrated, but not so much that there is no challenge. For two weeks, Billy pairs up with Maria Gomez and they work on the project. Billy sets up a separate collaboration notebook in his Office 365 OneDrive and shares it with Maria. Here's their first assignment, to set up the worldwide telescope, create a tour, and put their tour file in the notebooks. Let's watch their tour that zooms out from the Earth and shows where we are in the solar system and the galaxy. Billy and Maria must create beautiful work with both high production value and high educational value. Note the realistic 3D model of San Francisco in addition to the accurate 3D celestial model. Now Mr. O will comment on the tour. When Billy and Maria listen to the comments on their devices, Mr. O's notations are highlighted in perfect synchrony with his original pen strokes. Hey, Billy and Maria. Um, I just watched your tour. I think there's a really, really good job. You really figured out the worldwide telescope. I really like the way that you started out with, with these models. I think San Francisco one is great because you established the uh, viewpoint of being on the Earth before you pull back. And your, your shot of the Earth was really good, and I think you did a good job of establishing where the Earth is in the solar system and where the solar system is in the galaxy. So I'm going to give you guys an A. I think you did an excellent job. Uh, good work. As you just saw, OneNote's thinking capabilities are absolute magic. But cool as that was, here comes a really cool part. Learning Activity 2 involves scientific visualization, displaying earthquake events on the Worldwide Telescope's model of the Earth. Now we are on Maria's device. So now Billy and Maria are going to search for earthquakes. They go to Bing and simply type in earthquakes find out that uh, the U.S. Geological Survey has an earthquake hazards program. They go to the earthquakes section. 
the earthquake archives which go right up to the minute and search. There are over 7,000 earthquakes. They go ahead and download the data in a CSV file. Here they are in their notebook and they've put the raw data file directly into their OneNote notebook. This way of course it's synced up with Mr. O's notebook and he can look at it. So they open it and you can see that there's a huge amount of data here again over 7,000 earthquakes in the last 30 days. After spending several hours in Excel they come up with a massage data file which they also stick in their notebook. Note that they have the Worldwide Telescope add-in. This is what allows Excel to talk to the Worldwide Telescope. So they highlight the data that they want to plot after they massage it into the right kind of format, which takes them two or three hours. And then they click on View in Worldwide Telescope. So this, magically enough, is the image of the Earth with all the earthquakes from around the world in the last 30 days plotted on the surface. Now we've zoomed into Southern California and I can actually tilt the surface of the earth and see the earthquakes edge on. A really fantastic view. For their third activity, Billy and Maria are going to search for a subduction zone in the plotted data that they have on the earth's surface. This is the subduction project. A subduction zone is one of the most important phenomena in all of planetary sciences. It's where one tectonic plate dives down beneath another, and the point where they rub up against each other is where earthquakes are created. Billy and Maria create two tours of a great Alaska subduction zone, a longer five-minute narrated tour, and then a short tour with music on video that they publish out to their family and friends. Let's look at that short tour. That's a quick overview of the Earthquake Project. As you can see, it integrates a wide variety of digital tools into a very powerful learning experience based on 21st century design. The Meta Project structure reduces the workload on the teacher, generates valuable projects for other teachers to share, and most importantly, teaches students advanced non-cognitive skills, which provides vital workforce readiness. This is the kind of problem and project-based learning that we need in order to deeply engage our students and prepare them for the 21st century world. Giving educators hands-on experiences of this kind of learning design using live devices makes vividly clear what we need to do in our classrooms.